G'day and welcome to the from as I'm executed. I'm joined today by Yeah. And we're joined by the voice in the void, which is Vagabond. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. How are you guys? Uh yeah. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> doing, I'm doing I'm <laughs> doing Try well, it. You're 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 in the future to me, so uh how how is the last day of twenty twenty two? Uh blackjack and hookers. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I used to deal blackjack. It's not what it's rated to be. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> all right so uh vagabond came to us in uh via a live chat that we had in uh when we were doing our weekly show and he basically originally we thought he wanted to downsize his fleet um and that's kind of what we were going in with and then it yep. kind of changed a bit didn't it, in our grid so um yeah, yeah. We, we gave him homework he came back with his homework and we went yeah you're spending more. Yeah, and, and people are yeah. like, we're the bad influence, but it wasn't us. We, and we've yeah, got proof. We've got proof. <laughs> it was my tragic cry for help, and you guys yeah. did reach out, and uh, and you gave me a lot of good ideas, and <laughs> that's that's what came about from this. All right, well, let's let, let's figure uh, it out. I think, I think that was a, what he's showing is he's, he does have Pokemon Syndrome. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's get over to the browser and we'll get Vagabond to show us what he originally purchased. So this is his. Ooh, I'm gonna move a little bit. Wait, yep. Yeah. So we'll go. We'll start with the smallest and work our way up, Vagabond, and you can kind of show us why you. Tell us, yeah. Why did you get this stuff? So let's start with the little vehicles okay. here. What what are these for? Uh, uh they were there. Is basically what happened with mm -hmm. those. Now the dragon, the dragonfly was a referral bonus, so I didn't actually pay money for that. That just showed up mm -hmm. one day. They said thank you. Uh, the STV, I just wanted to see what it was like, and it stuck around. And the mule, I really enjoyed. But then I, I heard this voice that sounded an awful lot like either yours or Algorid saying, "Why did you buy this? Why didn't you earn this in game?" So, G gotta be yeah. honest. Gotta be honest. As vehicles go for this mm -hmm. year, I do like the STV and the mule. Mm -hmm. The mule has this really cool mm -hmm. thing about it. Like as Algorid points out, with the zero turning and stuff and the stv the stv's just got this really like it kind of fits with the bunker thing at the moment so you know yeah and the dragonfly is probably the best of the hopper bikes so you know they're not terrible vehicles but again we just they're owning games aren't they are so yeah right and i look at the dragonfly basically now as an lti token because it's it's there it was a gift so mm. all right uh I think I put the wrong Pisces in here. This is meant to be a medical Pisces, isn't it? Oh, no, no. Or, uh, uh, I have a medical Pisces and an Explorer. Yeah, I, so. I, I forgot to put him in this image, so apologies to that. <laughs> yeah. So, so just think of this as two guys. So this is a, a, a rescue <laughs> Pisces and, and a normal one. But yeah, well, standard C-A-X. Yeah, yeah, so what what are they for? Or what was the original uh, so that's one of those uh when i was talking to you guys originally it was it was um realizing that a lot of my fleet was purchased under duress during covid like it just kind of started losing my mind and buying ships the pisces ended up being the ship that i flew probably not the most but a lot it's a really good inter interplanetary system jumper and so i had a couple of them and then when the medical pisces came out mm. i really just jumped on it just to see what it did mm -hmm. and then came away from it going again that's that's an earn in game thing so you know regrets almost immediately badges kind so, of swallowed the red pill on that one too didn't he Agrid? so he's it is he's, he's loving, upgraded straight yeah. away look I, I bought one of those it's a great it is a great little version yeah. of the uh, pisces yeah, yeah. it's I, a neat I, ship I, I went and won one so yeah I, <laughs> no i went to a, a virtual bar citizen and i won one we had trivia questions and yeah I do. What was it on T? I think it was a. T How oh, good you were there? It was TV shows, wasn't it? That it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was yeah. the TV shows yeah. or the Star Citizen. No, it wasn't the Star Citizen trivia. One of the girls was just nailing that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can't remember her name, but yeah, she was. She was very, very bright. All right. Uh, the Hall A. Hall A was uh again one of those late night. I thought it looked cool. I wanted to check out the um the functionality of the whole thing and uh it just stuck with me and it, it is a neat ship uh especially with the fact that you can spawn it at outposts i thought it was really cool um but again it's it's an earning game ship and i i, I know that i mm. watched enough in, info runners to know the error of my ways here. yeah it, it's still it's still going to be a kind of cool ship to try out you know at the moment mm -hmm. with the cargo yeah. factor and that but um 
Well, and I saw somebody using a vulture and a and a hole a in tandem uh, a couple of days ago, and it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Is watching them actually snap the the uh, material from the vulture straight onto the yeah. hole a and take off, and that was really cool. But it's a cheap ship. So yeah, I, I think it, that'll be really cool when you say have something like a prospect, a hole a and a, uh, an expanse. That'll look really sick. That, that yeah, trilogy going really neat. Mm. Yeah, so it's it's definitely a ship you would be good to try out before you melt it or something like that but yeah, mm -hmm. but, yeah but that, that that's uh down the line isn't it the cutter yeah. now i i'm a i'm gonna be honest as, as starters go the more i get in the game and fly the ship the more i fall in love with it it's just there's something really like it, it is beyond the um what do you call it algorithm the, the the actual on paper stuff there is just a feel to this ship i don't know how to oh. to encompass it it just it it, it feels I awesome Yep, it, it does. And it is the most undrake ship of Drake ships. Yeah. It's probably my favorite ship in the last couple of years. Like yeah. I, I love flying it. I it's just a neat ship. It's yeah. they they really knocked it out of the park with this one. So well, to, yeah, well that's that you literally took the words out of my mouth. That's what I was about to say. I was, I was like to use an American reference, they hit a home run with yeah. that one. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, the Titan. Um, which I'm gonna be honest, these two ships are pretty damn close to each other now. I still see this as an upgrade, yep. but um yeah, yeah it, it, I think for the base, the base starter ships like the 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 cutter is the, the 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 best of the best of those. I think I think it it just pips the, the C eight X, um, and then the the Titans that that level above. And yeah, yeah. It almost makes you hope they go back and bring some of them up a bit. But yeah, all right, the Titan um, mm -hmm. vagabond. I got into the game uh, two and a half years ago thinking I was going to be this big combat badass and the Titan was the, you know, the starter for combat badassery. And it turns out I'm terrible at combat, but the Titans just stuck around because it's great to fly down to bunkers with, but mm. you know, any, any ship is great to fly down to a bunker with. This one just kind of makes you feel like you're in that top gun moment when you come down. So yeah. I know everybody says it looks like a penguin. I think it's an awesome ship. So uh, it does look like a penguin, but that's a term I mean, of endearment. Yeah. I think it's it, an it, awesome ship. Yeah. I, I, they don't mean that as an insult. They mean that as a term of endearment, honestly. Well, yeah, like a little, yeah. Like a super awesome penguin. Yeah. yeah. Pros Prospector. Prospector I picked up uh, at the time, thought that I should always have my industry starters owned so that after a wipe, I would be able to just get to work. Um, forgetting, again, I should go bigger and earn down instead of trying to go small and earn up. But yeah, it was basically the case with the prospector. Uh, later, you'll see the same thing with the vulture. Like I was just convinced that I had to have those starters mm. to to start off right. Right. So besides so, loaners, it doesn't hurt to have some of these ships to try out. Like like what we were saying about the whole A. Obviously, we're going to talk mm -hmm. about the, the vulture in a minute. Like it, it, people want to see that stuff when it comes online. They want to have those ships so they can try. Right. So there is nothing wrong with that. Obviously, Agrid and I would just suggest that you have an exit strategy right. right yeah and and having and being able to practice or learn the profession is not a bad bad option either and if you know if you're thinking oh i might like mining start with a prospector and before you go off the deep end and go big because you might find you hate mining mm. right or, or whatever suit profession is yeah. yeah i agree entirely all right the saber so obviously this was also another combat thing so do you suck with the saber as well i'm assuming <laughs> yeah i crash into things really well with it it's yeah. uh but it looks like the uh it looks like the old veritech fighter from robotech so like yeah there's just something so cool about it but ultimately i've flown it maybe three times loved it but it's it's just not a not a keeper is this so. the, is this a kind of similar thing with the next i'm almost tempted yeah the, i'll bundle the next two together because these are very similar i'm assuming so yeah yeah, the uh, Scorpius was definitely FOMO. I got caught up in the wave of FOMO with that. And then when the price went up on it, I was like, hey, I got this at the introductory, you know, war bond price. It'd be a mistake to get rid of it. The Defender is a really cool ship. And it's before I realized that it's also a loner 
on the on the banu merchantman i thought you had to have it and uh really that's not so much the case and you can earn it in game right yeah so i think i think for me it'll be an in game and it's kind of <laughs> built, built for the human market by the banu so for me i mm-hmm. think it will be more readily available than most people think probably yeah. behind a rep wall though but yeah Agri, i don't it, know you want to kind of weigh in on that one no i I, th- I think you're probably right i i really do like the banu defender it is a unique ship in it is so neat in the way it's <laughs> designed yeah if you if, but, if, if if you take this and extrapolate it out to what the banner merch man could be it's kind of mind-blowing to me right right i think the biggest problem for me is that dual pilot <laughs> yes uh, technician type setup where your technician is really just managing the shields now that could be really valuable because of the way the well, banner shield tech is basically well, the the tavara and ph- phalanx shield so yeah but they also originally said that the person the second person controls the weapons and i yeah. just it, it it doesn't seem to make sense the guns are both forward firing why would <laughs> why would you want to like yep. like if it was a turret i could get behind it right yep. um or so so, 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 missiles, so i could get behind that well they well. do have yeah. it does have special emp missiles <laughs> that are not implemented much like the sentinel does but so, so for me, it's another one of those ships where we're waiting for the the stuff to kind of mm. its real appeal to come online, and that could be literally swing and miss. And that's and on an alien ship that you're already paying extra for, that's kind of a scary thing. So yeah, I don't know. I for me, it's an earning game regardless. I know it is mm-hmm. for you too, but um, yeah. So so for me, that that's kind of like really appealing. But it, mm. like as soon as it gets to that level, I just go, yeah, okay, I've got to use my head and not my heart, and it, it goes. Yeah. And mine went. So yeah, there is there <laughs> is one advantage over all the other fighters you've got there is that does have internals. It does have kind of a little mm-hmm. bed areas. It does have space where you can yeah. put stuff. It's um, it's so basically it's, a saber with two beds. Is the easiest yeah. way to look at it. Yeah. Um. So it yeah it's a it's a it's a good option for going up to mm. a two player ship it's a fighter yeah at the yeah. end of the day so yeah all right the vault show i think that we kind of covered this a little bit before but this is basically was this to try out the profession or just to try out the profession and i'm a drake fanboy i, I i'll admit it right out it, okay. they make well i love the expanse right i love the books i love the show mm-hmm. i like that lived in beat up trash to hell and back look and drake hits that really really well and uh you know i've spent a lot of time in it in the 318 PTU. It's a neat ship. I don't, but... I don't know if, if you saw that expression on Agrid's face, but that was the one of, <laughs> we can no longer be friends because you're a great family. Um, but yeah. It was a, ah, you poor person. Well, but, if, you, you know, know I'll, I... I'll be honest. I, you know, you ask me what my favorite ship is, and I'm going to tell you it's whatever one I'm flying. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, having said that, I like, I like the Vulture, the Vulture mm-hmm. uh, yeah. fly. And uh, a lot of the Drake ships I do like. I just, don't like often the the way people talk about it. Oh, there's a point. No, uh, no. But in terms of the expanse, look, I also think um, Argo kind of pick up that kind yeah, of yeah, absolutely industrial um, expanse feel as well. So, mm-hmm. so I assuming as Agrid does talk about expanse, it's a similar thing for the expanse as the Vulture. It was to try out the refinery stuff and. Yep. Yep. It's I I got suckered in on a really pretty video um, of the. <laughs> the saddlebags flying over from the or it might have just been concept art but regardless i i went ooh and i hit by and that was that yeah there, there so. is there is something really cool about this it's one of the few miss ships i really like the look of um mm-hmm. it's probably the most unmiss ship i know it's misc right but like all the extra stuff on the outside i don't know it just looks appealing to me but yeah the extra well, is kind of our unmiss aren't they <laughs> yeah yeah, well, well it's that 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 evolution of their ship language too it's just it's neat to see it in practice but mm. yeah it's not something i need to own by any means all so. right cutlass black i i can fully get behind this it's probably one of the best ships to use in the game right now so is that kind of why you have it i and you're a drake fanboy you told us that as well so yeah. yeah this is the first ship i bought in game so uh with with real money so mm. after my i think i started with an aurora and upgraded to this almost immediately and never had any regrets from it but um it's a solid ship i've probably clocked my first 200 hours in the cutlass it's a good really good ship good ship yeah Yeah. uh vulcan i assume this is just going to be a recurring trend here with the profession starters (laughs) but yeah is that the tribe repair i assume 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Repair and basic refueling. So Now, Raft, uh, I know from our discussions with you, so our top professions that you gave us, just so people can follow along, and they can probably guess from this, the ships are... Oh, actually, I'll say this at the, uh, in the midsection, so I'll leave that for now. But um, yeah, tell us about the Raft. <laughs> I, I really, really like transporting cargo. It's uh, it's one of those things that I can do on my own. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one of those things I can do with a friend. The raft is a really good two person ship. As far as uh, I look at, I look at cargo transportation almost as a type of exploration because you can check out a lot of things while you're flying from outpost to outpost. And uh, mm -hmm. the the raft really kind of scratched an itch I didn't know I had. It's mm -hmm. a neat ship. It's really cool looking. Um, but I uh, would until I see that full functionality with carrying those big those big containers, I'm I'm not sure if it's if it's a keeper and it's probably going to be really inexpensive to earn in game. Hmm. And it, but it does have that nice expand series. Yeah. Going oh, it's it's things. an amazing ship. And I also love from a, from a cargo runner's point of view, the fact that you can jump out of that airlock instead of exposing yourself to potential threats on the elevator. It's it's a really good ship. It's a really good mm -hmm. smuggling ship. Um, I've run some illicit cargo with that and had a good time with it. I think so. the other the other thing is obviously it's two people and it's future like to anyone that has sat there and analyzed the ship, you can tell it's a sky crane. So it's not just mm -hmm. a cargo ship. It's obviously going to be a really good right. ship for unloading and loading whole series of ships and stuff like that. Um, it, well, it, and when it, it, this is the loader ship is what this is. And when it came out, I think it was you guys talking about this is going to be one of those ships that's going to hit those outposts that don't have space stations, right? So yep. there was a part of me that got really caught up in that and then... You know, it, it, some bigger it, it, ships said. So we have we have a mate or a former infrarunner called Hayes. Um, mm -hmm. he, he is really into the whole D's and E's, and he's about just massive cargo hauling. This is going to be a ship he wants because he's going to want to have one there ready to unload to increase. Like if you've got to unload these massive crates, if you do the math on right. that, like if you're trying to do that by hand with tractor beams, it's going to take ages. <laughs> that's that's why this thing exists. They they designed right. this to uh, to speed up. The process of unloading yeah. the ships and and, and, and and what is the aggregate like i think i'd have to go back and count but there is some ridiculous like 140 boxes on one of these and, and, and the time it's going to take is ludicrous mm -hmm. um, and, and and this was as they were developing it built with with cargo refactor in mind so yeah. That, yeah. it was a loading offloading aspect it's argo that's one of the, the the logistics is one of the things argo really excel in mm. it's a type of ship that for an outpost where they're just dropping the boxes outside this is a, a delivery or pickup system for that it's just yeah yeah and it is it is a two-man operation though because you need one person to operate the crane and one person yep. to drive the vehicle like so so right. so he's he's essentially the claw and picking stuff up and then you are driving him so he can then drop it off at the other place it is literally a very cool little yep. combo there that i really like um yeah all right uh the triage or the apollo triage so one of the things that I do, like I'm terrible at combat, I'm not good at bunker busting, but I'm I'm pretty good at backup medical, like that made bunkers entertaining for me. Like if I'm playing with friends, I can follow along and keep them going. So I thought the Apollo triage would be a good ship, um, but when it comes down to it, I, I really think there's smaller and bigger ships that would fit that role better for what I do. Sorry. You play the cleric, don't you? Mm. <laughs> Never mind. I, I played a cleric a lot when I was playing D&D &D back in the day. Yeah. I was, yep. was going to say, hello, nurse. Um, <laughs> the the C1 and the E1 are uh, spirit. So I'll let you tell us about those. Uh, C1 uh, was an impulse buy. The E1 was definitely thinking about that introduction to hospitality transportation, you know, the, the um, VIP taxi missions and whatever else. But again, thinking thinking forward and thinking bigger, there's better ways to do that. So yeah, hindsight's a wonderful thing that you're not meant to give away. You do that in the next screen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, the Redeemer, so big favorite of mine. But um, you already have. So, so you, you picked this on your own. Can you tell us uh, what you like about it? I guess. 
I loved the history behind it. I loved that it was partially developed by the community or at least pitched by the community at first. Um, when they started doing the behind the scenes looks at it, I had an opportunity to get one uh, fairly fairly discounted through three CCUs and just jumped on it. And no regrets. It's a great ship. And I like you guys brought up some stuff I hadn't even thought about. I was using it as, as uh, like a box runner as a solo ship, but it's yeah. it's a fun ship. I, I love the way it sounds. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, as combat goes, the real draw card for me is not just how strong it is, it's just, and Algrid kind of said this to you yesterday, it's just how well it scales. You know, you can, right. it, it, it's strong enough to use with one person, but it, it scales right up to more than four, like four people on guns, but then you can just carry another four people if you want, you know, like it's, and that's just as it is now, not mentioning all the future uh, mm. modules it's going to get, but yeah. Well, and one thing I had never taken into consideration when I started playing, like I like to do a lot of delivery runs. Now you have uh, NPC groups sometimes spawning above your landing zone. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that in a Pisces, you got to leave. Yep. Unless you're really good at fighting in a Pisces. I, I would say after the Pisces, this is probably the next best for bug commissions mm -hmm. at the moment. So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, the cause there. Gee, it looks I... <laughs> Sorry, Agrid? I said, gee, it looks squat there. It looks what? <laughs> squat. Squat. It looks a little, oh, a little squat. squish. It's probably just yeah. the angle, Agrid. Yeah, yeah. Just the angle, man. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. All right. I thought this was going to be the most incredible game in the, sh uh, the ship in the game when I was looking at the literature on it and uh, really fell in love with the aesthetic, thought the, uh, the just the sum of the sum of it has not quite done it for me since release i don't think it's i don't think it's because of the ship i think they're i have a couple friends who have it and it's their favorite ship it's just not it's not hitting those buttons for me so yeah, but uh i have to kind of pure relate, aesthetics i have to yeah. kind of relate to you on that i i since we've done the buyer's got and i've I, i've spent a lot of time flying it i have waned on it a little bit and i think a lot of it's got mm -hmm. to do with the clunkiness of it it's got this especially with the way the wings fold up and the way it flies when the wings are up it just feels it just it, it feels frustrating to fly i don't know how else to explain that and that may change given time but just at the right. moment it, it it feels like and the way i described it on, on one of our live streams was it's like flying an open pizza box it just it, it's just not naturally how you should carry a pizza box you, you know it should be folded down this thing with the wings up just feels really weird um and, i, and I not, see one flying towards an outpost i'm excited to see it but it's just just not for me yeah and and it it, it just doesn't feel explory enough for me and mm. um and then there's other little problems like the low landing gear and stuff and all that can be fixed obviously but for sure. me at the moment um yeah I'm, I'm waning on it a little bit but yeah all right uh the Raelian. The Raelian was uh, bought that at concept and there was no going back. Like the second I looked at it, it looked like just the coolest way to do medium cargo. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, I like the look of it. I like the um, I like the feel of it, even though I've never flown it. It just looks like the kind of ship that's going to be a blast to fly. Yeah. Small crew I like that as well. It just seems like a really cool way to do change the scenery for what I like to do. So I think for me and you, Agrid, and I'll try and let you speak on this, Agrid. Um, it's the pods, yeah, is our concern. Yeah, the pod, the pods are, are weird because they're like what you see on the pods there is not actually the cargo; that's actually the, the shell for the cargo to go in. So right, and yet they limit you to the size of the cargo box you can have. Yeah. So so but it also means that it's not like a hull C where the cargo is on the outside. So it's yeah. a so it's re this really weird thing because like for example mm. if you have a piece of cargo that's a raft style cargo box it has to how's be taken how's it going to fit it has to be taken out and put into this so it, it, it but d then you start to wonder is that a thing with all zion cargo like is this a standard <laughs> zion cargo feature is it, it, is there going to be a thing between converting between human and zion cargo like and that's well, something realistic. I, like, we've never really thought about that. Because they're smaller than us and they're shorter, do they just have smaller cargo containers? Like, Well, it, I think that ties in with the law in the fact mm. that uh, one of the things that why MISC have this really good contract agreement with the Xeon and why the, the freelancer comes about as being the first ship that actually incorporates Xeon tech is the fact that 
MISC sold or went into an agreement where they allow MISC to build the whole series in MISC territory. Mm. So MISC, so to, um, Xi'an ship manufacturers are building whole series ships for mm. use in Xi'an. Now that means that mm. we can see them flying in Xi'an space and it's just normal. So it kind of reduces the workload for CIG down the track. But I think it answers that question. All right, MSR. That was after the Cutlass Black. The this is this is when everything went off the rails for me because I saw the MSR in game and just had to have it immediately. I I love everything about it. It is a really cool ship. I don't. I know people say it's a Millennium Falcon. I don't I don't see that. It's just it's a really iconic ship to me. And it's one of those ships that when I bring somebody in to play Star Citizen for the first time, this is the ship I take them out in. And yeah, they sign up. <laughs> I, I, I think people just see what they want to see with ships. I yep. think me and I are going to point that yep. with all the people we've ever talked to. Like yep. everyone sees different things and what, what I was hearing there though was that the Star Runner is the ship that converted you from being a a Drake fanboy. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you wish. All right, Chris. well, and it's 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 the uh, also getting into the data running is something that I I hope is as cool as it sounds like it's going to be. So the first time I got on and saw bank after bank after bank of of uh, computer console and storage, it's yeah, it's just kind of sold me on the potential of the game in a huge way. So, the Crucible. Oh, I think we might have uh, had an influence here, just a tad. Yep. Uh. I joined the Cult of the Crucible, uh, my first IAE, and literally because of the recommendation of you guys saying that its its potential is too big to, to pass up on. So, yeah. The C2. So I think this falls in line kind of similar with what you said about the raft. Yeah, just... <laughs> Yep, I I like uh, I like doing the cargo transportation, and it's it's the champion as far as how much you can haul. Um, but it is really graceless. That thing is still a pain in the butt to land. So. The Perseus Badger's baby. Actually, that should, uh, that should be the. I just realized that should be the name of his ship, Badger's baby. baby. <laughs> yeah, Badger's baby. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good uh, the Perseus is Perseus has gone back and forth between the Perseus and the Polaris over mm -hmm. which large, you know, hammer that I wanted to have in the fleet. And I think I settled on the Perseus because it has that smaller crew. Um, but I'm kind of learning not to be so afraid of crew size on a ship. So the Galaxy, uh, I'm gonna say FOMO. Uh... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, FOMO and yeah, FOMO and as a possible uh, counter to some of the other ships that I was looking at, this was kind of an insurance bet. Um, I like the look of it, but I have no idea what it's going to do. So. The okay. liver medical, yeah, yeah, All right, those those things sound great. So I was thinking as a as a fill in for something else that I that I might want to downgrade from or get rid of in the future. But liberator, more transportation stuff. <laughs> More transportation stuff. I thought about the Liberator as something that was hauling a couple of prospectors or a, a, a couple of um, a couple of vultures, and just my my head started spinning. Like the the possibilities of that ship are really exciting to me. Hull C, and I think this kind of goes uh, back to just just real quick. Remember, I was talking about the raft aggregate. Like, look how many mm -hmm. boxes this thing's got on it. That is insane. <laughs> and at the moment, you can only carry three boxes on the raft. That means it can take one layer off at a time. I could wow. literally see eight whole seas on the oh, sorry rafts unloading this at the same time. Like yeah. that, that's how crazy <laughs> I think it's going to get. Anyway, sorry to interrupt, but I thought it was a good counterpoint or to conjoin. Anyway, sorry. Good the whole sea, yeah. <laughs> This one came up, and I just thought, oh, I, I like hauling cargo. I will like this ship. And that's literally all the thought I put into it. Um, and I already had the whole A at that point, so I thought, cool, it's just a really big whole A. So. Zikalik. That was the third ship I fell in love with. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's not much more I can say about it. I love the medical gameplay. I like the hangar. Um, I think... As a passive explorer, uh, I know people say there's no exploration in the game. I beg to differ. I, mm. I spend hours just flying around and looking at the surface of the planets and moons. Yeah. There's so much to see, and it's a fun ship to do it in. Mm. 
I think all three ships you kind of mentioned there that kind of made you go down the rabbit hole are very popular across the community. So I don't, I don't, sure. think, you're, I don't think you're alone there at all. No. All right, the Reclaimer. <laughs> And that's the that's the fourth one. That's the one that really ultimately um, I love it. It's my favorite ship in the game. Period. Um, I have a lot of ships that I love. This one I adore. I want to make this my main ship someday in the future. Like if I could just fly around in that and take it everywhere. And I, I know there's supposed to be maybe a snub that gets attached to it at some point. Maybe not. I don't know. But the potential for what I want to do, even as an exploration ship, even as a trade ship, I know it's a reclamation ship, but it it's just, it's so cool. It's just amazing. Well, from my perspective, I can gush about it all bit. from my perspective, you're not alone. Right? <laughs> um, I think, I think that, that says enough right there. But anyway, uh, the Endeavor. Uh, that one I picked up based off of your recommendation because I think it's going to be the the big granddaddy ship for a lot of the professions I'm interested in. And whether it comes down to the manufacturing or using the telescope, or I, I don't know about the, the gardening aspect of it, but um, the first thing that picked up on me is the, the floating hospital. So yeah, there's, there's quite a few things, just possibilities that I'm excited about with that. Really bad so. pun, but there is hope for you yet. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'll, ende I'll endeavor to contain my enthusiasm. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you discover that later. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the Bad Merchant. I had an opportunity to, um, with a referral bonus that I had, the Gladius and Gold referral, and through some CCs, uh, CCUs, I was able to pick this up for under 300. And so I jumped on it. It's potentially going to be the coolest ship in the game we don't know yet but that's why i picked it up it's it's a gamble but i think it's a gamble that'll pay off in the long run and it clearly jumps back in with um the transportation stuff so um basically what he told us like we it, we, we got a few out of him this time so we got this is in preferential order cargo salvage exploration industrial exploration i should say mm -hmm. medical and then smuggling um with the talks with him, though, we found that salvage dropped a little. Not by much, but by a little, right? And so this is what me and Algrid came back with, right? So you can see that we've um, we've trimmed off all the, the little the fat, so to speak. I think it's cool yeah. to call it Algrid. Um, you can see that we've added some more smuggling ships in there. We've added in all the different types of transportation. Algrid, is there anything else you'd like to add in that we've done there? Um, no, I think the... the big thing there was the we added we suggested the genesis starliner because it tied in with that uh transportation yeah uh gameplay and it, it tied in and it also expanded on the the idea of e1 being that personal transportation as well as other stuff yeah and it's obviously um, up for a rework as well so he's going to get something shining and new and different along the way um yeah yeah I, yeah, it's a ship I don't own, um, but I'm not super interested in. But if it becomes really good, I could get one. But yeah, yeah, I do see the um, appeal. Yeah, and the other the other ship that we suggested was the Odyssey, mm. um, which I was people... surprised. I was really surprised. Yeah, um, and it I was. I think we were surprised as well. But... Well, it was just it was just in it was in the very first couple of seconds, yeah. wasn't it? The way he was explaining what he wanted to do with exploration, it wasn't a Carrick. It was yeah. industrial exploration. It was like, you know, making the data and selling the data and, and that type of thing that yeah. you talked about. And, and, and it steered it very clearly towards this very quickly. And also that industrial aspect as well, that, yeah. that mining, the salvage, and, yeah. and having something that yeah. from what we expect, we'll be doing survey work. This just mm. tied in more with with that gameplay you were liking and and, and um, he can always take one of his larger ships and get a carrick anyway and the carrick is one of the most popular ships in the game there there mm. is going to be a plethora of people that have it i think on the other type of thing the odyssey is a lot rarer but just with the way he explained it, 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 it this was the one that was him not not the carrick and and the carrick is a really good deal don't get us wrong um mm -hmm. it, it's just that and a lot of people i could see the comments already what the you know but um but but the, but but you, you you had to be there for the conversation and the people that were there for the conversation uh w would agree with us it, he he you know if me and i are on the yep. same page it's generally the, the right way to go so yeah 
Well, uh, when you guys yeah. explained it and the opportunities with it, I, I got excited about the Odyssey in a way I hadn't prior to this. So, so is there any yeah, other... The other thing, the other thing that's worth considering with the Odyssey is compare the Odyssey to the cab of the Endeavor. And I think that gives yeah. you an indication of how the Endeavor is going to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can kind of you can kind of see it there a bit. This thing's going to get quite substantially larger. Um, I think yeah, the, the other two that I'll mention really quickly is probably the Retaliator is a very good smuggling ship. Um, if you can get the base as well and earn the stuff in game, it's a steal at that price. Quite honestly, uh, the Caterpillar we recommended because he's got the Galaxy, so it's going to give him that other modularity part yep. there he's got as well. Um, is there anything Vagabond that you said kind of like what you said with the Odyssey that you were surprised? Is there any others that we recommended that you were surprised by that you would like to speak about? I think there was one that I was thinking of that you were surprised by. I was surprised by um, the Terrapin because I'd never really given the Terrapin any thought. And what really surprised me is when you guys were talking about pairing the Terrapin with the Polaris. And that is the ship I forgot to add to this goddamn image. God. <laughs> uh, but, but the Terrapin will also pair well with the with the Odyssey as well, because the Odyssey and the Polaris do have the same size. Same hands, so. Gotcha. Well, and a lot of what I've been doing in 318 lately has been doing those entry-level delivery missions, which are now in yeah. hostile territory. So using the Terrapin as something that you could pop down there grab your container and get out with or even the redeemer with that but yeah i'd never really given I've, I've flown a terrapin it's a neat ship but i never really thought about it's um it's a uh, combination with other ships and how how that would make that work so it's yeah good. i was surprised by that yeah any 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 ship that has a hangar you really need to start looking about how it can be used with a smaller ship so everything from a kraken and idris you know, right down to the Liberator, I think is probably the smallest one, unless I'm wrong there, Agrid. But, um, you know, no, any, I think that's about right. Yeah. You know, you, even things like how, how can a ship work with a Pioneer? Because a Pioneer's got a pad on it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, the smallest would technically be the Crucible, if, if I think about it now, Agrid. Well, in, in price terms. Um, you know, so every ship that you own can essentially, like, how can it cycle through? So, yeah. so, so I think the hangar on a Polaris is a lot better utilized honestly than it is in an odyssey an odyssey is probably only going to have one or two ships where you can literally cycle through a whole heap of fighters um you know on a polaris and and see what it does so yeah yep all right uh yeah. agra is there anything you want to add before we move no on? i think that pretty much um sums up our our thinking on those ships hmm. so yeah yeah and so that's what we suggested and then that's what, this is what he did, right? So, and we gave him homework. We said, go, go away. Think about what we've talked about. Think about what you've got and, and you know, in, in line of, I want to reduce my fleet and, and maybe be able to, mm. um, uh, regain or, rec or recoup some of my, what I've spent. And mm. this is what he came up with. And I have to add the plus to this one too, because I stuffed up, but that's fine. I'll do it now. Um, so yeah, this is what he, uh, come up with besides the plus, obviously. <laughs> Uh, he showed us that this morning and we went, you spent more. <laughs> well, this, this, I, I, to be fair, I did, I did share two potentials and, uh, this is the, this is the one that I'm debating on is the one that added yeah. the, the so, Orion. So, 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 um, the, so the, the two they suggested was the one that we suggested and this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. So, right. Yeah. So, but, yeah, um, um, yeah, go ahead. And the one you guys suggested, I'm I'm doing regardless. Like I I completely agree with you 100. percent Um, there were a couple that I was a little surprised by, and after looking through the ship specs and going back through everything, and after talking, we talked quite a bit last night about it. And yeah, it it all makes perfect sense. So that's happening regardless. But then I started thinking about um, just like just, the person. Just a sec before you go on. I think for mine mm -hmm. and Algrid's benefit. Um, mm -hmm. now that you've been through the process, cause you've obviously watched a lot of fix my fleets, right? So now you've been oh, yeah. through the process. Could you kind of just for the audience's benefit and algorithm mind sanity, can you kind of say how customized do you think we made this experience for you? Like just, just because it's not something that we can convey in a very short show. So how would you say that how custom was this made for you or was it just like in your own words? It, it was made with me. 
And that's even better because you kept saying, both of you kept saying last night, well, it's your fleet at the end of the day. If that's something you want to keep, if that's something that you're really your heart set on, keep it. But at the end of the day, what I'm looking at is a fleet that actually you guys zeroed in on some things about the way I play Star Citizen that I wasn't even thinking about, like the fact that I'm more of an industrial exploration person. Right. I I kept thinking of it as as something else entirely. Um so when you guys started giving out your suggestions, it all kind of clicked into place in what I see my future in the game with. And also you gave me permission to say it's OK not to have a ton of little ships, right? Like mm-hmm. you you hear it all the time. You watch Info Runners, you know, you don't need a ton of little ships. But going through this process and realizing, hey, I can actually fund any changes I need to make by melting off all these little ships. and you know, using what LTI I have with some of those smaller ships had LTI on them, I can use those to make sure I have LTI on that Caterpillar or, you know, whatever else is in there that that maybe needs LTI. And I know it's not necessary, but yeah, it, it was a very custom experience. Um, there wasn't any point where you guys were like strong arming me into anything. So, and you answered questions because I had them. <laughs> I think, I think uh, like this is probably a bit of a side note. We've never had a complaint. I think the closest we've ever got to a complaint was one guy came on fix my fleet and then the next uh, after the episode aired they kicked him out of their org oh no and what that actually said to us was that org is terrible and literally (laughs) we helped him over about the next week and he ended up starting Mm -hmm. his own org with his own friends and he's now more happier than ever So, so so um yeah, the biggest issue we run into is power trippy org leaders. I think that's the biggest issue we have, or complaint that we hear from. Agrid, would you say that's probably? Yeah, it's probably the, the feedback we get is where yeah we make suggestions and then you it they inter- come back and say, oh my my org says I I shouldn't get this ship yeah, because it, we it, need fighters yeah. or something like that. Yeah, so. it, it interferes with their org plans. Um, and well, uh, we're not there for and- orgs; we're there for the individual. <laughs> And part of the reason why I reached out to you guys in the first place is, I mean, when I started playing this game, I got involved with uh, Space Tomatoes Org and great bunch of people, and they're really good to fly around with. So having some fighters, having some bigger ships to to team up with is great. But I have work responsibilities that pulled me out of that, and I I very rarely get to play yeah. with one friend that has time, let alone an org. So I, think I had a... It- uh, I think, big I th- chunky fleet I, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there really because I, mm-hmm. I think you can plan to be in an org but i think you mm-hmm. need to put yourself before the org because right. uh, um we, like anyone that's been here for any length of time i me and Agrid have seen so many orgs rise and fall it's ridiculous right yeah um and and, and you, you you can plan for that that is totally fine but i think you just have to put yourself before the org and, and i think because at the end of the day you are spending the money not the org um, so yeah, right. I know we've tangent a little bit here, guys, but I, I did want to cover that because it's something that we don't often can convey very easily. Um, and and, and the, the whole reason we do fix my fleet is to take like because we obviously talk about this stuff in general, don't we, Agrid? But we yeah. don't. We yeah, need I, to I, really drill that into you guys that this is a customized experience to that singular person. So it's not, just we're, it's not just we're trying to plug the crucible or the endeavor on people. <laughs> In fact, mm. I don't even think we actually suggest, you know. We, he already had you know, them. We didn't. We he didn't already had them. them and yeah. Well, and didn't want to get rid of them. And, you know, I think I didn't get I, I, already. I think, I think in almost passing, <laughs> we mentioned the Orion and the Starfarer Gemini yesterday, and they turned up. You know, like, well, the uh, reason why I threw those on there is, like I said last night, I, I have one friend that I play with and he has the Orion. And I was thinking, well, okay, well, if I want to play on the Orion, I'll, I'll team up with him. But then I started thinking about it this morning. I was like, well, what if he's, his schedule is busier than I am? So what if I do want to take the Orion out and I'm feeling impatient? So that's the only reason why I may pick it up. But it's also possible that I will never pick it up. <laughs> the, the other the other suggestion I think Algrid and I would probably show it, throw at you, and you correct me if you think I'm wrong here, Algrid, but maybe you should get the landminer because he's already got the Orion. So he's got the one that dominates space and you've got the one that dominates the ground. Mm. Yeah. Now, now... Having said that, we're speculating that the large yep. miner will be a land miner because it kind of fits with, you know, you've got the prospector, which focuses on land. You've got the mole that's really focusing in space. You've got the Orion that's focused in space. Yeah. It, it makes sense for the next... Logical the, sense. The size in between yeah. to be mm-hmm. one that kind of is focused on 
planetary. I'll, let's just, let's put it this way. I think we'll both be surprised if it's not our grid, yeah? Yep. That would cover it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And they did confirm it, that not the end of this year, but the end of last year, that the underground mining is still a thing. So if you mm. if the Orion can't do it and the Mole can't do it, and the Prospector can, you know, process of elimination type of thing. But anyway, um, yep. so so that so that's a little suggestion there at the end for us. Um, uh, Agrid, I guess I'll kind of throw it back to you. What would you... Oop, I pressed the wrong button. It's one of those days... I uh, I pressed the wrong <laughs> button again. Oh my god, I'm having. There you go. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yeah. So, what would you like to hear below in the comments, Algrid, uh, from well, people? The usual thing I say when we do a fixed month leak. Do you think we've led him down the garden path and mugged him in the alley? <laughs> mm. um, how are we giving him the good oil? Uh, they're all things to uh, that are worth knowing. What would you do? How would you change the fleet? Mm. How would you um, mm. solve the issue of I've got all these ships and I'm not sure I've got what I want yeah. Um, based on the information yeah. we were able to gather, uh, there are our suggestions. I, th I think so. How would you meet those requirements or those requests? I think very specifically, I would like to hear specifically about the Odyssey, knowing that he's exploration industrial, mm. is that so, like, because I know there's some people are like, oh, the character's so good. No, you can't get rid of it, right? But to me, like, it, the, the, just the way he talked about exploration mm. and, and what he wanted to do with it, I just yep. went straight to Odyssey and knowing the Odyssey will eventually be cost more than the Carrick and, 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 you know, it'll be harder to get, et cetera, et cetera. You can and just it, take and that Odyssey bigger, yeah. and go down to the Carrick, you know? And it is a bigger ship. It's got a, you know, like the Carrick's got the snub hanger. That's got a yeah. larger hanger. It's got the same size hanger as a, mm. as a Polaris. So it is a, it is in that sense. It, it gives a lot more. And if you're, um, if you're an industrial it, player too, it's going to line up a lot more. Like well, even though I look at my own fleet because my own fleet is fairly heavily industrial, right? If I if I honestly sit here and I have talked talked with you about this before, and I've even mm. said I have armed an art on taking my Carrick and turning it into an Odyssey quite a few times. He um, has. I, 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 have to, I, I have to confirm that he has. Yeah, and I I, I still have the CCU. So my at the moment I'm sitting on the Carrick and I'm waiting for the Odyssey to come out. And if it is what I want it to be, I will jump to it because quite mm. honestly. If I'm looking for salvage wrecks, if I'm looking for mining nodes and, and all those type of things, the Odyssey is built for the surface of planets to find that stuff. The Carrick is an in-space explorer. It might be okay for said um, asteroid fields and stuff like that for the Orion, uh, but... But again, there's probably maybe the Terrapin's even better at that than the Carrick is, if you know what I mean. Because the Carrick is mm. really for finding points of interest in my book. But you know, uh, it, yes, you can convert it, so to speak, to do the more you know mm. industrial orientated things. But I think it's more tailored for that out on the fringes, away from everything type of thing. It it doesn't. I don't know you tell me, Agrid, but to my brain it doesn't seem to be a ship that kind of essentially is made to work with others. It's meant to be independent and on its own. You, you get the impression with the, with the carrot that it is a deep space explorer. It's not a, it's not a team ship. So it's got the ability to mm. run repairs. It's got the ability to carry a snub ship. It's got the ability to carry a hangar, uh, a mm. vehicle. It's got the, you know, it's got modular hangar, modular yeah. cargo pods, which could, change out to either enhance or increase its range yeah and we um, don't know about that stuff yet either so that's also up in the air as well so that's why yeah. i've got both and i'm sitting on them and waiting so but, um but it, i but i do think the odyssey does does lend itself to that industrial aspect even better just because that hangar is big enough for you know the hull a it's big enough for a a, a prospector it'll pro possibly be big enough for the the Vulcan, the the Vulture. So it's going to be, it does, as an explorer ship, if you're doing industry, it does pair itself with being able to put in those those beginner explorer ships and, do, and expand that ability even more. So Everything we're talking about here too all comes back to our biggest problem with that, obviously, is just how it was sold. That's how they should have sold it. It's a ship that works with others. That, 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 that alone, <laughs> don't even go into all the stuff about the surveying and all that stuff, the explorer that works with other ships as opposed to the character that doesn't work with other ships. If they'd sold it that way, it would have sold more. But yeah. anyway, I, I'm getting off topic here, but long, long story <laughs> short, if, if in the comments, if there's any other ships do you think that would be good for uh, Vagabond, 
let him know. Uh, any other suggestions? He will read. Well, I'm sure you're going to read the comments, yes, because people do put lots of suggestions down there, uh, Vagabond. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And you guys cut my fleet in half. So, and I've got enough options left over that, yeah, I've got some play around room if I need it. But uh, this we, was awesome. We also did throw some other suggestions there, more, more than just like the land miner, because we did talk about that yesterday. Mm. But we also said things like mm. the capital refinery and the capital gas miner might be ones that you want to look at too. Mm -hmm. if and when they turn up as, as Agrid would put it um i still think they're coming but Agrid likes to play it safe that's just how Agrid is <laughs> right and, and I, 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 I we should play it safe right so so, so that doesn't dig it Agrid. that's just he's being he's the when i'm the insane one he's the common sense one but it's just <laughs> I, I, i'm going to be insane when it comes to ooh, pretty yeah yeah so, right yeah so yeah uh, we cover each other's bases there all right well with that then um is there anything you want to add vagabond no, I appreciate the help, guys. I seriously, like, I was in the depths of despair yesterday when I was just scrolling through ship after ship after ship and just looking through just the, the last image or the last two images that we looked at. That's a little easier to get through. And then plus you throw in the loner ships that come along with those. And I've I've got a robust fleet, but it's not a bunch of mm. sabers that I'm never going to use. Yeah. It's not a bunch of... That, that's, yeah. a, that's a good point we didn't touch on. We do normally touch on that. Ag Agrid always tries to remind me of that. But yeah, so you're going to get lots of little loners that'll let... So, so I believe you'll get a, like, you know, vultures and stuff like that. All the, well, now you've got the Reclaim, you don't need the vulture. But you know what I mean? Right. So as right. as more things come online... Like, if you get an Orion, when that la if the landminer comes in first, as an example, you would get a landminer mm -hmm. to try. Because right now, the loners are a, a mole and a prospector. Right. You know, and so then... The Endeavor has the, the Cutlass Red, so the whole thing behind the C8R, the Rescue I, Pisces, I don't need it. <laughs> I think, I think, I think honestly, Agrid, you'd also say when the Apollo comes in, that, that, they'll switch to that, wouldn't they, at the very yeah, least? I, and things I, like I that. would expect you'd, you'd see that, but I can't, I can't say certain, but mm, it's the type right. of thing you'd expect that would fit with the. We've seen it with others. Like, We've seen it with others. Yeah. So we'll be like, logically would be very surprised if it, if they differed somewhat from mm. that. Um, they're very, very good at that. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. With that, then the voice in the void has been Vagabond Prime. He's been out. He's been Execute. And we'll catch you in the next one.